Today's top stories, October 28, 2021. Vax to the max in full swing. More jabs from various brands add up to the country's stockpile, which will be used in efforts to achieve population protection. It's the young ones' turn to roll up their sleeves. The health department says the rollout of pediatric vaccination in the country will kick off next month to protect them from severe COVID-19 infection. Accepting money but voting another bet, Comelec says this idea should not be condoned, stressing that vote buying is an offense. And from test first to test no more, we tell you the areas that have dropped testing requirements for fully vaccinated travelers as part of efforts to revive domestic tourism amid the pandemic. Good day, I'm Rom Dufo. Welcome to the PNA Newsroom. Our top story, the Philippines is getting closer to its goal of having 100 million doses of COVID-19 vaccines with the delivery of more Pfizer and AstraZeneca vaccines. Just this afternoon, a total of 896,000 doses of AstraZeneca vaccines arrived. The jabs are donated by Japan. Meanwhile, the country receives another batch of almost 977,000 doses of Pfizer following its delivery of last night's 976,950 doses. These Pfizer shipments are part of the 2.92 million doses of government-procured vaccines that are scheduled to arrive over the next few days. The latest vaccine deliveries bring the country's total COVID-19 vaccines to more than 100.5 million doses. Vaccines are Secretary Carlito Galvez says the latest delivery is expected to boost consumer confidence in COVID-19 vaccines as the country starts to roll out its vaccination program for minors in more than 100 hospitals throughout the country. The government is all set for the COVID-19 vaccination rollout for minors with comorbidities. The news from Marita Moahe. The nationwide rollout of COVID-19 vaccination for children aged 12 to 17 years old will start on Wednesday next week, November 3. Health Undersecretary Maria Rosario Vergere said Moderna and Pfizer vaccines are to be used as these were the only ones granted an emergency use authorization for the age group. In Bacolod City, the three-day pediatric vaccination drive will be held tomorrow and on November 3 and 4. The inoculation site will be set up at the Riverside College campus located behind Dr. Pablo Torre Memorial Hospital. In Pateros, the vaccination of minors will start in November 3. There are around 7,190 minors aged 12 to 17 in the city based on the latest data from the Philippine Statistics Authority. In Malabon, the inoculation of the adolescents has already started on Tuesday, October 26 and will end tomorrow, October 29. So far, Malabon has inoculated around 315 minors with comorbidities. Meanwhile, the Department of Health says the administration of the booster shots, which was earlier targeted this November, may be extended to January or February next year. The booster shot is intended for the priority groups, which include the younger population with comorbidities. With the arrival of more COVID-19 vaccines in the country, Verjere said the department is hiring more vaccinators, expanding vaccination hours, and putting up more vaccination sites to accommodate more individuals. For the PNA Newsroom, I am Marita Moahe. The Philippine National Police has ordered all of its units to start preparations in securing the nationwide rollout of COVID-19 vaccination for minors next week. BNP Chief General Guillermo Eliazar has ordered all police units to start their security preparations and get in touch with their local government units to be able to effectively craft security plans. Eliazar says the strict enforcement of minimum public health standards and safety protocols will remain amid the possible downgrade of the National Capital Region to Alert Level 2. 14 tourist destinations across the country have scrapped their swab test requirement for fully vaccinated travelers. Details from Chris Crismundo. 
Tourism Secretary Bernadette Romulo Puyat welcomed the easing of restrictions for tourists. The Department of Tourism has been pushing for lesser restrictions and requirements, especially if the local travel destinations have high vaccination rates among their locals and tourism workers. Among the provinces that agreed to waive the negative RT-PCR and antigen testing include Cebu Province, Lapu-Lapu City, Catbalogan City, Bohol, Iloilo City, Negros Occidental, Clark Freeport Zone, Subic Bay Freeport Zone, Tarlac, Masbate Province, Southern Leyte, Tacloban City, Maasin City, and Misamis Oriental. Boracay Island still requires a negative RT-PCR swab result for all allowed tourists, including those from the National Capital Region, except for tourists within Panay Island, including Guimaras Province. Meanwhile, Bohol, Iloilo City, and Negros Occidental are requiring a vaccination certificate generated from vaccert.doh.gov.ph on top of other travel requirements. For the remaining destinations, the DOT advised travelers to check directly with the concerned local government unit for the entry documents needed. Romulo Puyat said the DOT would continue to work with the National Task Force against COVID-19, the LGUs and the private sector to ensure that 100% of tourism workers in the country will receive their COVID-19 jabs by December. For the PNA Newsroom, I'm Chris Crismundo. The Tourism Department is looking at providing free swab tests to persuade more tourists to visit the country's reopened destinations. At present, travelers from Metro Manila may avail of the discounted RT-PCR test worth 750 pesos from the Philippine Children's Medical Center down from its original price of 3,577 pesos. Tourism Chief Bernard Romulo Puyat says if things go as planned, they are planning to make the swab tests free. Still to come, Komelec says vote buying is illegal regardless of financial situation or noble intentions. And ensuring safe travel, the MMDA inspects the Paranaque Integrated Terminal Exchange ahead of the UNDAS holidays. Details ahead, keep it here on the PNA Newsroom. The COVID-19 pandemic has greatly changed our lives for the worse. Lives and jobs were lost and economies reached a meltdown. Thanks to the arrival of safe and effective vaccines, we are one step closer to normalcy. It's time to do our part, get vaccinated for our safety and for our recovery. If you are there in that community, go there and have yourself vaccinated by any of the vaccines available. They are all potent, they are all uh, effective. I would like to appeal to all our Kababayans, please get vaccinated against COVID-19 and be the government partner in preventing further spread of the disease. I encourage you to get vaccinated as soon as possible time. These vaccines are safe and they are the key to reopening our society. The need for international solidarity and cooperation cannot be made clearer than this pandemic because everyone is safe. No one is safe globally until everybody is safe. Vaccines work. Comelec spokesperson James Jimenez says political candidates should not encourage the public to accept money from those running for public office. In a Twitter post, Jimenez says he disagrees with the notion of taking the money and voting according to your conscience. He says vote buying is an election offense regardless of financial situation or noble intentions. 
This after Vice President Lenny Robredo, who is among the presidential bets in next year's elections, says voters may accept money being offered to them, but they should vote based on their conscience. Jimenez reiterates, vote buying is strictly prohibited under Section 261 of the Omnibus Election Code. He says those who will be found guilty of the election offense shall be punished with imprisonment of not less than one year, but not more than six years, and shall not be subject to probation. Also, the violator shall be sentenced to suffer disqualification to hold public office and deprivation of the right of suffrage. Senator Bongo dispelled rumors anew that he is clearing the way for another candidate to run in the 2022 elections as he stressed that he is 100% committed to his decision to seek the vice presidency. Go says while the matter is for the ruling PDP Laban party to determine, he already made the decision to run as vice president after President Rodrigo Duterte opted not to run for the same in next year's polls. Go says someone must step forward to continue the administration's programs and pursue the positive change that the president has started. Regarding Davao City Mayor Sara Duterte's meetings with presidential aspirants Bombo Marcos and Senator Bato de la Rosa, Go said it is the prerogative of her party, Hugpo ng Pagbabago, to meet with key leaders and possibly support certain candidates. Go emphasizes he respects her decision to run for the third term as mayor instead of the presidency. Over 18,000 vehicle registrations in Caraga region that are expiring starting this month with plate numbers ending in zero may avail of the extension program of the Land Transportation Office until the end of 2021. Aside from expiring vehicle registrations, student permits and driver's licenses may be renewed until December 31 this year. LTO 13 Director Nordi Plaza says they have intensified their information drive on the validity and renewal of licenses and registrations to let motorists in the region know about the extension program. The LTO Central Office says the extension of validity and renewal of registration of licenses was due to the existing quarantine restrictions in the country. Philippine National Police Chief General Guillermo Eleazar hailed the successful anti-drug operations that netted close to 14 million pesos worth of shabu in Bicol and Pasay City earlier this week. On Tuesday, Joint Police and Philippine Drug Enforcement Agency personnel led operations in Camarines Sur that resulted in the death of suspect Alvin Baldoza and the arrest of another drug suspect. On Monday night, police operatives arrested Chiz Navia, a barangay chairperson who ranked third in the municipal police drug watch list at his house in Barangay Daha, Lagonoy Town. Also on Monday, authorities arrested Jake Essick Fernandez, a high-value target in a buy-bus operation in Pasay City. In a statement, Eliazar said that PNP and the PIDEA will not stop in teaching drug personalities who continue to challenge the government a lesson. Eliazar said law enforcers seized more than 8 billion pesos worth of shabu in the series of aggressive anti-illegal drugs operations since last month. Moving to business, the Department of Energy maintains it is not involved in choosing the buyer of shares of Shell and Chevron in the Malampaya gas field. Chevron Malampaya LLC and Shell Philippines Exploration BV sold their Malampaya shares of 45% each to units of Dennis Uy's Udena Corporation. Energy Secretary Alfonso Cusi says the process of companies in choosing which firms to deal with follows global standards. The energy chief said the DOE went beyond its mandate by reviewing the technical, legal and financial aspects of the transactions and provided this information to the public. Moreover, the consortium submitted its work program for Malampaya, which involves drilling activities to pump more gas and stabilize the power supply from the gas field. In an earlier statement, the DOE said the inquiries in the Senate on the sale is causing delay to the work program of the consortium. The MMDA on Wednesday inspected the Paranaque Integrated Terminal Exchange, or PITX, days ahead of the long weekend for the observance of UNDAS. MMDA Chair Benhur Abalos said traffic management plans are in place as they expect an increase of passengers going home to the provinces to commemorate All Saints Day and All Souls Day. Abalo says they are coordinating with local government units and all other concerned for the safety of the public. 
Meantime, he appealed to the public to follow guidelines set by the interagency task force and be mindful of the minimum health protocols, such as the proper wearing of masks, face shields, and safe physical distancing. He said members of the road emergency group would carry out breathalyzer tests on bus drivers to determine whether or not they are under the influence of alcohol. The implementation of number coding for all vehicles and truck ban remains suspended. More stories from the PNA newsroom. Hope for a better tomorrow awaits four families bound for Dinagat Islands through the Balik Provincia Bagong Pag-asa program. And the country's sports commission says yes to adding more events to the Southeast Asian Games. Back after a quick break. Stay with the PNA newsroom. Mga kabida, hindi pa rin po nawawala ang banta ng COVID-19. Kaya para masigurado natin ang inyong kaligtasan, hanapin po ang safety seal sticker sa kahit na anong lugar na inyong pupuntahan, mapamol man ito o kahit na anong establishment. Ang safety seal po ay tanda ng isang establishment ay sumusunod sa minimum public health standards ng gobyerno para maiwasan ang pagkalat ng COVID-19. Ating pong tatandaan, bida ang may disiplina. Kaya hashtag safety seal para sa ligtas na pamilya at ligtas na bayan. Mga kabida, COVID-19 may be here for a while as we continue to aim for population protection through vaccination. So to keep you and your family safe, look for the safety seal sticker whenever you go to malls, eat out in restaurants, or visit any private or public establishments. This safety seal certification signifies that an establishment is compliant with health and safety protocols set by the government to prevent the spread of COVID-19. Kaya, you're guaranteed of health and safety consciousness of the places you go to. Remember, bida ang may tatak. Check if there is a safety seal along the entrance area of the place you're visiting para ligtas ang pamilya, ligtas ang bayan. Yosel Washing PNA Newsroom, former families affected by the COVID-19 pandemic are coming home to have a fresh start through the Balik Provincia Bagong Pag-asa program of the Duterte administration. The four families, composed of 12 individuals, left Metro Manila on Thursday morning for Dinagat Islands. The 12 beneficiaries bound for Dinagat Islands underwent RT-PCR tests on October 27 at the BP2 depot in the Quezon City to ensure that they are not infected with COVID-19. Among them is Jonalyn Diona, who along with her three children decided to return to the province but without her husband who must stay in Metro Manila so he could continue working to support his family. The family is thankful that the government has created programs to help people by giving them hope for a better tomorrow even in their respective provinces. The BB2 program has also helped a couple reunite with their four children back home in the Nagat Islands after almost six years. Christopher Arabia, family patriarch, says he and his wife went to Manila some years back to make money, put food on the table, and sustain the education of their children. The Arabia couple is looking forward to a new chapter of their lives with them back home. The BP2 program is an initiative of the Duterte administration created to address the congestion in Metro Manila's urban areas. An international aid agency has provided learner and teacher kits and other educational aid to schools in Marawi City. Claire Gige with the news. 
The Islamic Relief Worldwide or IRW Philippines in partnership with the Task Force Bangun Marawi or TFBM and the Bangsamara Ministry of Basic, Higher and Technical Education or MBHTE extended its educational aid to schools in Marawi City. Through its support to education and empowerment of vulnerable children affected by conflict and COVID-19 or CIVCAC project with donations from the IRW USA, learner and teacher's kits were provided to Ibango Central Elementary School or ICES in Barangay East Rurugagos, Marawi City Schools Division, and Saksi Learning School or SLS, an Arabic boarding school in Barangay Kadayonan. So what we are doing right now is supporting the school, the learners, so that uh, we can also support the parents and by keeping the ch children or learners in school. Disumimba shared that this recent effort, which started in November 2020, is a support for the education and empowerment of vulnerable children affected by conflict and aggravated by COVID-19. Here, school supplies for learners in addition to their monthly stipend for the whole school year were provided, while teachers were given their own kits, soft support through a series of training, and other needs for the current mode of delivery and education, which is modular learning. The manager also said that more school support is run as specific and unusual needs arise and as such ICES which noted 15% increase in its enrollees as of September this year has been given a water system hand washing facility and other more equipment while the SLS received living in facilities like chest freezers and beds among others overall a total of 385 learners both from the ICES and the SLS and 35 teachers benefited Beneficiaries gave thanks to IRW Philippines and USA for their effort. I am very happy that I would like to thank for a million thanks to the Samsung League organization. I am so brahmin masaya. For PNA Newsroom, Claire Gigha of the Philippine Information Agency, Lanao del Sur. Authorities slammed the planting of an anti-personal mine by the CPPNPA in Tublingan, Iloilo as a tactic to prevent development in the area. The mine exploded near the patrol base of the 1st Iloilo Provincial Mobile Force Command on October 24 in Barangay Mayang, Tubungan. A pursuit operation led to an encounter with members of the CPP-NPA Southern Front Committee, Kumiteng Rehiyon Panay, on the same day. Two police personnel were injured in the operation. Colonel Gilbert Guerrero, director of the Iloilo Police Provincial Office, the NPA would like to get rid of the police so they could do what they want, like harassing and coercing residents to cooperate with them. He says the EPO condemns the explosion as an act of terrorism and a violation of humanitarian law. The Philippine Sports Commission supports the initiative to add more Asian and Olympic Games in the Philippine editions of the Southeast Asian Games. The ASEAN Sports Ministers are raising calls for preparations for future Asian and Olympic Games as part of the agenda of the 6th ASEAN Ministerial Meeting on Sports on Thursday. PSC Chairman Butch Ramirez and Executive Director Guillermo Iroy Jr. represented the country in the virtual meeting. Ramirez says the inclusion of more events is an efficient way to prepare national athletes for big international competitions. One of the projects taken up in the meeting is the engagement of ASEAN member states and relevant stakeholders in sports law, women in sports, capacity building, and anti-doping. Ramirez says he is positive sports is getting better recognized as an important pillar in nation building and growing a better and stronger ASEAN. Advocates of mental health continue to drum up the campaign for zero suicide as more cases are logged in Baguio City. Rike Dukas, founder of the psychosocial support group Anxiety and Depression Support Group Baguio City, says they have recorded 26 cases of suicide from January to August this year. In 2020, the mental health clinic of the City Health Services Office recorded 30 suicide cases, most of which involved those from ages 50 to 35 years old. Duca says the most common trigger known to cause a person to end his or her life is the change in the pandemic lifestyle, environment, and exhaustion with the world's current situation. Baguio's mental health helpline gets an average of five calls a day aside from the text messages and private messages sent to its social media pages. Duca says they see something positive that many are coming forward and communicating to mental health professionals who can really help. A pandemic-inspired short film held by award-winning director Mark Raymond Garcia 
of Sagay City Negros Occidental will be featured in the 32nd Singapore International Film Festival this November. Garcia's Mga Bagong Nawong Sang Damgo Kagkatingalahan or The New Faces of Dreams and Mysteries is one of the 23 entries in the Southeast Asian Short Film Competition. The film is one of the 16 short films funded by the National Commission for Culture and the Arts for its Exena Cinema Quarantine Project for 2020-2021. Garcia says, despite the challenges posed by the COVID-19 pandemic, he went on to pursue his passion for making films. Lab Diaz is also participating with Himala, a dialectic of our times, as well as Shireen Seno, who directed To Pick a Flower. This year's SGIFF, which showcases over 100 films from more than 40 countries, will be held in cinemas only. Take one more look at today's biggest stories. Vax to the max in full swing. More jabs from various brands add up to the country's stockpile, which will be used in efforts to achieve population protection. It's the young ones' turn to roll up their sleeves. The health department says the rollout of pediatric vaccination in the country will kick off next month to protect them from severe COVID-19 infection. Accepting money but voting another bet, Comelec says this idea should not be condoned, stressing that vote buying is an offense. And from test first to test no more, we tell you the areas that have dropped testing requirements for fully vaccinated travelers as part of efforts to revive domestic tourism amid the pandemic. As Filipinos, we all have a vital role to play in preventing the spread of COVID-19. So remember, wear face masks and face shields. Wash your hands often, practice safe physical distancing, go out only for essential reasons, and get vaccinated as soon as possible to protect ourselves, our families, and the community. Together, we can beat COVID-19. Thank you for watching another episode of the PNA Newsroom. For more news content, check our webpage or log on to the Philippine News Agency's Facebook and Twitter accounts. For more news about the government and how it serves Filipinos, look for these hashtags on all our social media platforms and websites. We are shown on the pages of the PCOO and its attached agencies. Also watch us on television on PTV4 and IBC13. It's 58 days before Christmas. And that's your daily dose of the biggest stories that you need to know from PNA Newsroom. We tell stories that inspire change. I am Ram Dufo. Have a good day.